The Syntax of Things by Arisha. Chapter 39. To be a fool. Poise restored. Again, Potter said. Savarus lowered his wand. He cringed at the thought of having to do this again. He could feel an invisible whirlpool suck his vitality and slowly suffocate him with a firm hand squeezing his throat. A hand that most likely had to belong to justice. We'll take a break. You may sit. Severus quickly disappeared from the boy's sight to the safety of his bedroom and then his bathroom. He closed the door behind him and locked it. Opening the faucet, he let the cold water soothe his fingers. The red nail marks on his palm, caused by clutching his wand tightly for the past hour, were barely relieved. Exhaustion had never struck him so profoundly before. His head ached, his eyes burned, his arms and legs were sore. Exhaustion without reward was torture. Severus knew how to deal with torture that involved a reasonable amount of death and unfairness, yet he had no idea how to deal with this one. He splashed cold water on his face and felt his muscles twitch with tension in protest. He rubbed the bridge of his nose and wiped his face. His eyelids were closed as he emptied his bladder, and the only thing he could think of was his bed waiting for him, and Potter waiting for their training to continue, and having too little time left to sleep well until morning anyway. He returned to his living room, and Potter jumped up at once. Ten more minutes,' said Severus, "'and we'll call them a night.' Potter raised his wand at him and waited. His green eyes were fixed on him. Severus narrowed his own. Legilimens! And into the darkness they go, the wise and the lovely. Diving into that abyss of sadness and abstraction again, Severus focused his eyes on Potter until the room decomposed around him, and he sank into thoughts and feelings that hit him with a violence he didn't deserve. Glimpses of Potter's youthful heart smashed against him, and he withdrew a ball. You're not emptying yourself from emotion. Why must I repeat myself every time? Potter pulled his head up from the floor and stared at him. I am... I am trying. Trying what? He snarled. To cause us both a breakdown. You're close. He offered his hand and Potter took it. Too late it occurred to him that Potter was perfectly capable of standing up by himself. He made a mental note of rewashing his hand later. It's... Were you seeing my thoughts? because I think I managed to... I had control, right? He had, for the best part of it. It wasn't his thoughts Severus was worried about. Your emotions betray you. They take control of the situation when you cannot. Sharing your emotions can cause greater harm than sharing your thoughts. Patter was once again drenched in sweat, giving him that I'll make you proud look that Severus could only interpret as a joke. Nice try, Potter said. Do you even know what emotions are? Severus curled his lip in nonchalance and aimed his wand. Legilimens! Emotions were a malicious curse. They could enslave one's mind, betray one's roots, dominate over everything a person was, and turn them against their better sense for the sake of the heart. But what Severus knew was that such idiocy could only leave a heart crippled. Fuck! Patience! Keep pushing! You're letting me in! Emotions couldn't be described in simple words. Severus didn't believe in sadness, joy, or regret. Maybe the best proof that language was problematic was that it oversimplified feelings. It made them look harmless. Stop! Potter fell forward once again, and Severus made a mental note to, at the very least, teach the boy how to maintain his balance before he let him storm over to war. Feeling tired, Potter. Potter's glasses slipped down the bridge of his nose. It's not easy, you know. If it was, you wouldn't be here. Potter looked up, and his eyes darted for a moment at Severus from head to toe. A look of embarrassment crossed his face in a frozen spot, trying and failing to add a cheeky grin. Potter got to his feet. Resisting the impulse to ask what had just happened, Severus glared. You should try harder than this. Master yourself or let your emotions destroy you. Potter nodded, his features a mixture of shock and holding back laughter. I'll try harder, come on. Potter's eyes weren't completely focused on him. Severus cast the spell, and the first sentiment that hit him was awkwardness. He was aware of Potter's heart pumping blood with all its might. Are you even aware of how easily you let me in? Severus snapped. He scowled in indignation at the boy's irresponsibility. Potter gave him a look that suggested that he was trying to be serious about this. Severus doubted it. What's wrong? What's wrong? Potter repeated dumbly. You're distracted. 
No, I'm not. I don't have all night, Potter. He said ten minutes. Do it. Severus glared hard, and to prove his point, he attempted a wandless push into the green eyes. A second later, he was in. He raised an eyebrow, losing his patience by the second. Um, Potter said. Well, what is it? Severus snarled. It's, um, you know, external factors. Potter's face was blank. Severus, however, was close to snapping. Then maybe I should read your mind and see what kind of external factors these are. Potter nodded to himself once. Concentrate! They tried again, and Severus felt no resistance when he cast. Potter's mind was exposed. It held no strength or belligerence against him. The barriers were barely perceptible before they collapsed under Severus's magic. Severus should be sleeping! Pathetic. Sorry. Potter stumbled back and looked anywhere but at Severus. Am I giving up my nights for this, then? Or is it all an excuse to you? Immature though you may be- Don't start. I got it. I'm bollocks at it. I'll try harder. For a long moment, they stared at each other, and then Potter blinked. The corner of his mouth quirked, and Severus wondered what could be the excitingly humorous thing that he was missing. Severus had little faith in fools, despite his life clinging to them. All right. He asked in a low voice. Yes, Potter said suddenly, too serious. Do it. He did it, and then he did it again. If you just let me do it my own way, by using tricks, by thinking of something intensely, as though your ways are any better, not that you'd ever let me succeed at something you hadn't thought of. Don't even pretend it didn't bother you. I saw you. I do it my way and it works. I do it your way and I fuck it up because your way just sucks. Talk, talk, talk. The utter and heartbreaking stupidity of words. Severus hissed. Oh, come on. You are not trying hard enough. Your attention is easily distracted as though this is a game you can play whenever you see fit. Blushing and frowning won't get you anywhere, I'm afraid. He said sharply. You may fail at everything you try and let all your attempts be wasted for all I care. You may even let the Dark Lord possess you and take you. But for the last time, you will not make a fool of me. There. At this moment, Severus could safely admit that he was pleased with himself. His righteous sense of dignity watched from the far end of the room and slowly clapped its approval. He almost expected the words, poised restored, to hover above his head. Potter rolled his eyes, and with a fearless demonstration of swiftness, he closed the distance between them and tugged at Severus's belt with his fingers. Before the sheer terror could successfully sink in, and as the blood was drenched from Severus's face and heart in an attempt to block out the grip of panic, Potter grabbed his fly with the other hand and pulled the zip up. Don't leave these undone again if you want me to concentrate, Potter said bitterly as he stepped back and started collecting his things from the couch. See you tomorrow? Astonishment. No. Condemnation. Eternal. This had to be it. There he stood, Severus Snape, Death Eater, spy, professor in his late thirties, in his right mind, in awe, and stared with giddiness at the sixteen-year-old brute who was constantly ridiculing him for his own sick satisfaction. Points, his mind said. Points, his mouth repeated. How many? Potter asked. Severus contemplated as the revulsion overtook him. Revulsion used to feel worse, his consciousness commented, and he mentally slapped it away as Potter looked at him in expectation. A hundred. Oh my god, Harry! Why did you do this? How could you? Some, 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 some. I can't handle this right now. Hermione covered her face with an ant, and after releasing her breath, she left the great hall. Harry continued eating silently. Is this your fault? Dean snapped once he saw Harry. What did you do? Snape was on patrol and he caught me out of the door. Harry said without looking up. He was being a dick and I called him a jerk. Dean rolled his eyes. Seriously? He looked at the high table where Harry supposed Snape was sitting and watching with great satisfaction. What did he do? You shouldn't have talked back. He probably expected you to do so. He can take points. I want to panic too, protested Neville. Just imagine being alone with Snape in the middle of the night. I think I'd scream. He shuddered visibly, and Harry faked a sympathetic nod. I'll learn the points back, Harry said at last. We have the match coming up anyway. I'll catch the snitch. You'd better do so, said Seamus. We don't want Hufflepuff to get us, do we? A hundred points, repeated Neville, still struggling to accept the news. Did he scare you? Once he caught me being late for a class, it wasn't even his 
worthless, Harry. And he gave me that look. I thought he was going to kill me. For days and days, I kept thinking that he was going to get me. Neville's eyes had gone wild as he recounted his traumatic experience. Harry knew exactly which look he was talking about. Ron mumbled something to his plate, and Harry looked up. He wasn't sure if he had said it to Harry, and he didn't dare ask. Ron looked at him for a second, and then turned to Seamus. What's so much? Next Thursday. It was supposed to be this Friday, but they changed it. Hermione came back and collapsed next to him. Her eyes were red. Do you know? Do you even know? She hissed. How many papers? How many parchments? How many tasks it took me? She took a deep breath. To earn a hundred points for Gryffindor, do you have the faintest idea, Harry Potter? I'm sorry and I love you, he said, and he didn't complain when she lightly punched his arm. Professor Snape is smacking at us. Just look at him. Smacking. Just look at what you've done to your house. Hermione said desperately, and Harry dared to glance at Snape. He was smirking, but not for the reasons Hermione thought. It occurred to him that she would think he was mad if he tried to explain it to her. It wasn't about points. It was about establishing the rules of who was in control and how easily control could be taken over. Harry wasn't really sure who had control at the moment. Is it funny to you? She asked. Or do you think it's cool to insult the teacher? I'll fix it. Harry assured her. Hermione broke into low laughter. Just look at how he's looking at us, she joked. Not that he doesn't have every right to do so. You called him a jerk, Harry. Not really. Just kept gawking at his pants and then took the initiative to zip up his flies. Uh Uh-huh, because he was. He'd take the points anyway, come to think of it. That seemed to calm Hermione a little. She gave him a long, severe look. Next time, Harry, just don't. Harry chuckled. Yeah, 